Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex and we are in Thailand. And today we're talking about why relationships fail and why hearts are broken in Thailand. Let's get to it. So if you're a regular average looking guy from the West, then you know what a complete waste of money those dating apps are. If you're perhaps not a tall guy, maybe you haven't got a full head of hair, maybe you know, you're not as young as you used to be, but you'll know that jumping on a dating app is a complete waste of money. And that's why it's such a huge shock for guys when they come to countries like Thailand, how they get female attention. And unfortunately for guys who are not used to female attention, and for some guys who are used to female attention, they get themselves into a world of trouble. They find themselves committing to people who they shouldn't commit to. And so in this video, I really want to explore why relationships fail in Thailand and what you can do as best as you can to protect yourself. So let's break it down a little bit here. There's, there's two different types of relationships we'll talk about. The first is the holiday relationship. The one where someone perhaps comes over here, meets somebody, the chemicals, they're flowing through the body, the excitement of meeting somebody new, and then they find themselves going back home, the long distance relationship. So let's talk about long distance relationships. So I, I personally have had a long distance relationship and so I guess I speak from experience when I talk about this. You know, when you meet someone for a short period of time, you go back home, you're left with the reality of distance and time, time zone differences. And depending upon where you are in the world, that time zone could be you going to bed when they're waking up. That puts such a strain on the relationship. Now, there are other strains that happen on the relationship, but you're again you're, you're you're not only able to see each other by watching a video cam you know they're getting up while you're going to sleep your energy is completely different and then trust issues can arise from that you, you don't know where they are they don't know where you are and you only have just met this person you're only just getting to know them yet you're committing to being on a camera with them <laughs> in the evening and in the morning or certain periods of time throughout the day and this can be very, very challenging. You've also got to consider the financial issues that come with a long distance relationship, because ultimately to see that person again, you need to fly or they need to fly. And that can be quite difficult. Now, if you've got tons of money, that's absolutely fine. But you've also then got to schedule it. If you're working, then you have to take holidays. You can only see that person for a short period of time. So it's a lot to really commit to a relationship that you've only ever really just begun with. You've only met that person for a short period of time. And you typically tend to overlook red flags. And I'll talk about red flags a little bit later in the video. So let's move on to the second type of relationship where perhaps a person has moved to Thailand They've met someone and they've got the rose colored glasses on and it's very exciting and there's, you know, bedroom activity and it's a new place. However, sometimes when we meet people, we tend to overlook certain things because we're caught up in the passion of the moment. And if a person doesn't have lots of experience with uh, relationships and positive relationships back home, then that might bring some of that baggage to new relationships when they come here. So let's talk about issues that are common to both long distance relationships and relationships where you've met the person in Thailand. Communication, the language barrier. Now I've been in a relationship with a person who had English as their second language and that leads to so many so much miscommunication, should I say, because their ability to understand the nuances of your language is very, very limited. They can only typically understand things that are said clearly and literally. And so, you know, your colloquialisms, your phrases, speaking quickly, they can't understand, they can't pick up on it. And if you don't speak their language with the same degree of fluency, well, you end up with a lot of arguments, miscommunications, miscommunication and problems. <laughs> So 
relationship expectations. Now, a person who enters into a relationship might have different expectations than the other person. You, as the person jumping into the relationship, might think this is something that's got to be long term. The other person might be thinking, well, this is just a short term fun thing. And because you don't necessarily speak the language and not have the same level of communication, or perhaps you don't ask the question and we're assuming things, you may not be on exactly the same level as to what the relationship is. And so finally, let's talk about red flags, things that are there right in front of us, but for some strange reason, we completely ignore them. So the first one is in long distance relationships, particularly, but it can happen in relationships when you are around a person locally, they disappear. You, you lose them for certain periods of time and they come back with excuses like, oh, my phone ran out of battery or I lost my phone or, or the signal was really, really poor or sorry, I slept in or sorry, I fell asleep. Now in isolated cases, that can happen. However, if you start to see that as something as a regular occurrence, those are kind of frequent, you know, those those kind of phrases and things that are said and things that are happen that happen, then you might want to think twice. Hiding the phone or having a second phone. Now, in the case when it's a foreign language, hiding the phone and is not so much of an issue because typically you can't actually read what's on the phone. That's why it helps to learn the language. But if a person is hiding their phone or they have a second phone, you might be forced to ask some questions or have second thoughts. What's their friendship group like? Now, if they're with a group of people who are constantly going out partying, who are constantly having affairs and sleeping with other people, then that's going to send a very strong signal to you that they're keeping friendships with people who reflect who they are. Now, if they're the kind of person whose friends are homely or they're the kind of people that you like to be around that don't cause trouble, they're in long-term relationships and they're very, very stable, I think that's a very, very good signal. Now, that's not to say you can't be with a person who's got friends who are a little bit sketchy. However, combined with all these other factors, you have to look at it uh, in its entirety as well. Not making your relationship public. Now, that's a big tell. If they've got lots of social media and strangely enough, their pictures appear on the social media and you don't, well, that's going to be a huge red flag as well. And finally, making their financial problems and their family financial problems your problem early on in the relationship. That's not a very constructive thing. Now, everyone has financial issues in this world or have had financial issues. Maybe they haven't, maybe they were born rich, but Making any financial issues the responsibility of your partner early on, it, it's a red flag. It, they shouldn't be doing that early on in the relationship and expecting you to help them out. We understand that some people are at different levels economically, but making a person making their problems, financial problems, your problem early on in the relationship would have to be a very, very, very big red flag. Now, that's not to say in all of these things that you can't have a successful relationship, but it's an, an understanding as to why many, many relationships fail. And to understand that sometimes you're just not on the same page and sometimes the people that we choose may not be the right person for us. I know what's going to be the right thing for you and that's watching my next video coming up. Thank you.